What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Stefan here from App Stuff. In our last video, we did this really awesome Instagram profile with the use of grids. In this video, I want us to go over how to implement buttons in our application so that when we press on those buttons, we can do stuff in our app. So it's gonna be a lot of fun and it's actually gonna be pretty simple as well. So let's just go ahead and get started now. We're gonna start by creating a new file. It's gonna be a Swift UI view and we are going to just call it buttons tutorial and just go ahead and make sure you guys have your preview connected so what we're going to do guys is we're going to create this like custom header that's going to go up to the top and we are just going to create some buttons that are going to change the background color of that header for us so we're just going to go ahead and start by creating a rectangle and we're going to move it all the way up to the top of the screen so to do that we're going to create a v stack and then we're going to create this rectangle. We're going to give it a fill. We're going to say color dot blue, a frame of UI screen dot main dot bounds dot width. Height is going to be like 200. Delete the alignment. And then we can say dot ignores safe area. And then just go ahead and add a spacer down below to push it all the way up to the top. So this is something you would see that's similar to like a custom navigation bar or a custom header in a, a, a screen on an app. So now what we're gonna do is create some buttons here so that when we click that button, it changes the background color of the header. So let's just go ahead and create our first button. So we're gonna say button and open up your parentheses and I want you guys to select this option that says title and action. So we're just going to pass in a string here. So I'm gonna call this basic button. And then tab over, you can literally just hit tab and it'll take you over to this next input parameter and hit enter on that action guy. And it's gonna open up this closure for you. So basically what this means guys, is that anything we place in here inside of this little block that's part of this button is going to get executed when we hit that button. So. That's why you see this little guy that says code here. Um, so now what we need to do is add some code into this block so that the button actually does some stuff. So right now you guys could just hit play and on the simulator up at the top there and you guys will notice that this is like a clickable item, right? So that's like the native button sort of functionality that Swift UI gives us, it's pretty cool. Um, we just pass in this text and it creates this button for us. But you guys notice that it's not actually doing anything. So what we're gonna do guys, and this might be a little confusing, um, and we're gonna cover it in more detail in the next video, so don't worry, but we're gonna go up to the top of the file, and we're gonna create something called a state property. So say at, and then capital S state, var background color. And then we're gonna say equals color dot blue. So now, we have this property that we're gonna modify, and when we modify this property, that's gonna change this background color. So we have to actually remove this guy that says fill and pass in this property that we just created, background color. So now the rectangle color is based on this property that we created, and it's a state property. That means that when that property changes, it's going to reconfigure our view with the new state of that property. So basically, if I change this color to pink, then because this is a recognized as a state property, it's gonna say, hey, when this changes, I need to change the state of the screen. And it notices that the rectangle color is based on that state property. So when we change this to say pink or yellow or blue or purple, it's going to uh, regenerate this header and change the background color for us. That's a basic explanation of what we're doing. So in this button closure, you're just gonna say background color equals color dot pink. So now guys, if I hit resume here and I tap this, uh, let's wait for it to do its thing. You guys notice that it changes my background color to blue. So that's super, super cool, right? So one more time guys, just a quick explanation of that. Our rectangle, its fill color is now based on this state property. So whenever that property changes, it's going to reconfigure the rectangle with the new state of that property. That's why it's called a state property. 
So when we click the button, that's when we're modifying this state property. So we're saying, hey, background color is now equal to pink. And then it's gonna say, hey, you changed the state. So then it reconfigures this rectangle with the new background color. So that's just a basic explanation. We're gonna go a lot more into detail into state properties in the next video. So don't worry if that doesn't make sense. This is supposed to be all about buttons. So this is a pretty boring button, right? So we wanna make some uh, more fun, more uh, design or user-friendly buttons to put in our app. So let's go ahead and start doing that now. So I'm gonna create another button property and you guys are going to select this option that says action and label. So we have the same action uh, parameter here. We just hit enter on that. And then you guys notice that it creates these two blocks for us. So for this button, let's say uh, background color, oops, equals color dot purple. And then let's make this label here. So this guy up at the top, this basic button, all you can do is pass in a string. You can't really customize it. However, with this uh, button constructor, we can create a completely custom label and it will make this thing a button for us. So that, this is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and see how this works. We're gonna add some text here and we're gonna say change background. And then uh, you guys notice that it creates another button for us and it looks exactly the same as that guy, but we'll be able to customize this text property right now. This guy up here is just a string. This is an actual text component. So we can modify the text component. So I'm gonna say dot background and let's make it color dot purple. And you guys will notice that, hey, this is now a purple button. And we can also say dot foreground color is dot white and then it'll change the color of the text. So that's pretty cool too. But now let's actually give this like some proper dimensions. We can go here and uh, let's create a frame up at the top. We have to say frame. Uh, with 300 height is 50 and our alignment we don't need. So this now actually looks like sort of a real button you would see in an application. And then we can also guys go ahead and give it a corner radius of like 10. And that look, it looks like a pretty nice button right there. Let's go ahead and actually just modify this font a little bit more because that looks um, not great. So we can just say font is headline and it's gonna make it like nice and bold. And you guys will notice that when I hit this button, it changes my background color to purple, which is so, so cool, right? So this button right here changes it to pink and then this button right here changes it to purple. So you guys notice I can click between these things and it will just change that background color for me. So for the rest of this video, guys, now that that's like sort of the basic concept of buttons, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how to create some different styles of buttons. Um, because there's a couple you might want to use in your app. So this is sort of like a rounded uh, rectangular button. Let's go ahead and create a capsule shaped button. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this code, paste it right there. This is going to be colored out pink. And let's see. Uh, so when we hit this guy, it's going to change it to pink. Uh, oh, we're already using pink. Let's say colored out blue. Right, so pink, purple, yeah, that looks cool. Now let's go ahead and just modify how this button looks. So I'm gonna give it a background color of blue. So that looks really nice. And then instead of giving it a corner radius, guys, let's go ahead and give it a clip shape of a capsule. And you guys are gonna notice that it gives you that nice like capsule shaped button that you might see in something like Twitter or something like that. Um, everything else is the same. Um, so that looks pretty good. Um, you guys notice, however, that we are using this frame to set the dimensions of the button. We don't have to do that. We can actually use the padding modifier as well. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that now. So here, instead of creating a frame, you could say dot padding is dot horizontal and give it like 96 and or let's make it like 80. So that looks pretty good. And then you could also say dot padding dot vertical is like 16. <clears throat> and you guys will notice that that pretty much makes the button look exactly the same. And that uh, doesn't set like a hard coded frame on the button, which sometimes for the purposes of your app, you might want to avoid. So this um, is just a little bit more dynamic. Let's maybe make that padding like seven, uh, horizontal padding like 72. So that looks pretty smooth. Now guys, I want to show you how to create like some circular buttons that might have like images associated with them. So Let's go ahead and create another button. 
select this guy that says action and label, hit enter on action right there. And we're gonna maybe say self dot background color. Uh, what are some other fun colors? We could say dot green. And then let's make this label so we can create a circle. And that's just gonna be this massive circle. So let's go ahead and adjust the frame. We can make it like maybe 80 by 80, delete the alignment. And that looks pretty good. And now let's actually put like an image in there. So you guys could go ahead here and say dot overlay and just go ahead and delete that, hit enter. And in this, in these two overlay, within these two overlay parentheses, we can say image system name, and you could say like heart dot foreground color is dot white. And you guys will notice that a heart shows up there and that looks pretty good. Um, you could also say like heart dot fill, that looks pretty good. Um, if you guys wanna change the size of it, you could say font dot title and that will make it a little bit bigger for you. And that looks awesome. And then if we hit this, you guys notice that it makes that guy green. So let's go ahead and maybe give this circle a fill of color.green, right? So that looks pretty neat. Um, and guys, something you can also apply to buttons is something called a shadow. So if you guys pay a clo uh, close attention to how this looks, um, go ahead at the after that overlay and say shadow and just give it a radius of 10 and you guys will notice that it gives it this nice sort of gray shadow on the border of the button and that sort of just makes the button look like it's popping out a bit more and gives it a little bit more dimension so that's pretty cool and then I'll show you guys another way of doing this um, you don't have to use the overlay um, you could do this differently very similar to how we accomplish sort of the same thing up here in different ways you could go here and uh, just copy and paste that button. And instead of creating a circle, you could just create your image. So we could say system name, uh, we could use a bell. And I could say like uh, dot frame, or let's give it a font of dot title. So it makes it a little bit bigger, dot frame. And let's say maybe like 80 by 80 as well. So that gives it that same frame but you guys were building this around an image instead of a circle, then you could give it a background of like color dot yellow. And you guys notice that that gives it that like square shape and you could apply a clip shape of a circle here, just like that. So that's pretty cool. You could also apply maybe a clip shape of like a rounded rectangle with a corner radius of like 10 and that will just make it so that that's like sort of a more square, like a rounded square button. I like the circle look though. It really just depends on what you want for your app. And then also guys make that foreground color dot white. So that looks really good. And then we can, you know, also just go ahead and apply that shadow to this button as well. Give it a radius of like 10 and that makes it look really, really good. So and then when we press this guy, let's make it color dot yellow. So this is looking pretty smooth, guys. That's just a bunch of different buttons. These are the most common like forms of buttons you're gonna use in your app in your apps. Um, you guys notice though that you could literally make anything you want a button, right? You could create any sort of custom view that you want and will have the functionality of a button. So that's something that Swift UI uh, gives us the ability to do and it's absolutely awesome. But that's gonna wrap it up for this tutorial, guys. In the next one, we are gonna start covering more about state properties. Like that's what we saw up here and sort of how SwiftUI works with the use of state properties. And that's gonna be a lot of fun. We'll see you guys there. Peace.